So the very first question is how to be intentional with older siblings when there's a newborn in the family. All right, so I've just got um, that question up. All right. Hi, Chomi. Nice to see you as well. So good to see you guys. All right. So when you have a newborn in the family, right? First of all, it's a tough season. It's a new season for every single one of um, the member in the family. It's hard for you because you're sleep deprived, right? Waking up a million times in the night. You know, it's tough for... Um, Obviously, it's tough for the newborn as well, right? Because if you have a newborn who is just sleeping all the time, that's amazing, right? But I didn't have a sleeping newborn with my firstborn, right? My firstborn was a horrendous sleeper. Even as a newborn, I remember like two weeks old, she was just be crying and crying and crying nonstop, right? So, so many things can happen. And if you were like me, who have your kids close together in age, right? You would have like, I don't know, I had a 16-month-old when my... Um, my um, second born was born and then I had a um, 18 month old and a 16 month old um, when the third one was born as well so that was just crazy times right and so when there is a newborn in the family first and foremost just give yourself grace to know that this is a season where honestly all you got to do is just show up for your kids and I'm sure you guys do that all the time right don't worry so much about you know um, being intentional about playing and things like that right like really really focus on just connecting your children, right? Just being, um, just there, right? Which I'm sure you guys are doing. And most importantly, to look after yourself, honestly. Like that is really the most important thing I always tell everyone. When you have a newborn in the family, right? When you, um, even as a first time mom, second, third, fourth, right? It is such um, a fragile season, right? And it's so important to just not put additional pressure on yourself, right? Like, Honestly, I put so much pressure on myself as a first-time mom. And it was only when, with subsequent children, when I had my second and my third, that I realized, honestly, all they need is just us being there, present, right? Connecting with them. They don't need everything else, right? Everything else that we think, oh, you know, I must be spending that amount of time with them, you know. I need to be, you know, um, just splitting myself in half, you know, all the time, right? Don't worry so much about that, right? That is the very... First thing I wanted to say, right? Now, having said that, okay, having said that, after you have covered that base, after you have ensured that, you know, you're not just putting additional stress on yourself to do things, that you are not, I guess, um, 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 just, you know, not taking care of, your, of yourself. Like, when everything, all the bases have covered and you are feeling up to it, right? Now, now I want to help you answer the question, how to be intentional with the older children, right? Utilize... Um, nap times like obviously you know as um, newborns our our babies um they will be sleeping right either on you either either in a carrier i utilize the carrier so much with my second and third right just because i didn't want to be spending so much time just in the room resettling the baby and not with my older child right so with my second and third i had i had just baby um i, I just baby wear um my um, baby all the time the first in the fourth trimester right the first three months of a newborn's life i just wore um, them close to my heart so that i could literally just be present for both as much as i could right i was as as i i was baby wearing right i would be able to you know be there with the older children as well right but having said that if you as much as possible if your baby is sleeping if your baby is napping having like um just some time sleeping in the in the 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 court, the best in that right, that is the time right that you can focus with your older children right. So again, we need to know our priorities right. Like as I mentioned, priority is you. You look after yourself first right, and after that, next comes your children. Your children. Don't worry about the house right. Don't worry about, you know, that the house is not tidy. You got all those things, laundry, things like that. Like, honestly, when I had my um, my girls um, so close together and then we had the the um, newborn phase, right? My girls would would be um, taking clean clothes off the couch that are not folded. Like, you know, sometimes when it's impossible to just balance everything and you just need to know to give yourself grace that some things are just going to be not the same as before, right? Like, you cannot expect everything in your in your in your season when you're having a newborn to just be so efficient and so on par with how it's normally um is when you don't have a newborn in the family because like i say it's it's a total different ball game right now 
other than that, utilize your nap time, right? When your kids are sleeping, you um, you can focus time with your, your older children. So how I usually do it is I will be very specific about, you know, even just 10 minutes, right? Before I go and do all my other things. Because like I said, my, my priority is my girls. I'm just make, making sure that when I have time um, without the baby, my time is focusing on connecting with my older children. So they don't feel like, oh, you know, mommy's just always with the baby, right? So what I do is I, I prepare, I, I will prepare and advance things that I want to do. And, and these might not even be, you know, like activities, like sending out activities. It could just be, you know, thinking, okay, I want to read a book with them, you know. Just kind of knowing in your mind what you want to do with that time, right? Like, oh, maybe, um, she has really enjoyed playing with, um, you know, that puzzle today, right? So um, when baby is going for a nap, I'm going to sit down and do that puzzle with her, right? So just kind of have a rough idea of what your children's interests are currently at the moment, right? So that when you are... When you are sitting there with them um, um, after baby goes to sleep, right? You are not like, oh, what should we do kind of thing. You kind of know straight away like, all right, I'm going to have 10 minutes now. Um, I'm going to do something that my children um, is currently like of um, most interested in, right? So whether it's a puzzle, you know, playing with Lego, playing with um, magnetic tiles, or even whatever in that your child is currently playing with on that particular moment, in, in that particular moment, on that particular day as well, right? So really being... Um, leaning into um, your children's interests, knowing them, right? And so that when you have that spare time, right, you are very intentional about what you want to do with them, all right? Now, the next thing is to incorporate, um, uh, sorry, not incorporate, but include your older children in all your routines with your baby as much as possible as well. So I, I often do this, like almost everything that I can possibly do, um, aside from, um, breastfeeding obviously because that has to be done by only me right but other than that you know buffing the baby you know um tummy time um what else um nappy changes include your older children as much as possible because you know like i said um there's there's so much learning in in just doing life together right and it helps with the, it helps with that connection as well so it, it just takes all the boxes right connection you know because like i said before so many times right we think of play as just you know a certain kind of activity where they're sitting down playing with toys but for children play just pretty much just looks like that is their way of life right it's everything um, about doing life right and so for your older children when they get to you know help to clean white baby's bum for instance you know when they get to help to bath baby you know um, safely obviously you know giving them certain rules and boundaries right it helps with um, having that that kind of um, quality time and helping to um, play time with your older children as well, right? Because for them, you know, when they are helping to bath baby, when they are having, helping to, you know, um, do tummy time with the baby, that's all play to them and that's all really, really valuable as well, right? And also, if you have children who are slightly older, so not so much in the toddler age, if they could be reading as well, it's perfect to get your older children to read to your, your newborn as well, right? So it's, a, it's an activity that you can all share and all enjoy together. And your older children can uh, most definitely take on that role really, really well. And they would love to do that, right? When I had my um, two um, younger ones, right, my oldest wasn't even three. But she could read a lot of books by memory, right? Because we have read so, certain books so many, so many times, um, you know, like Where is the Green Sheep and The Hungry Caterpillar, for instance, those like really, really love books, right? Dear Zoo. She, she's able to read, and I say read because she's obviously not being able to read at a two-year-old, as a two-year-old, but she knows um, the book so well that she thinks she's reading and it's so good and so valuable for them to read to their younger siblings as well, right? Even if it's from memory. Like actually just this week, um, a couple of, uh, um, not a couple, but I think one or two people actually asked me, um, is it okay for children to um, pretend to read? Like even though they've got... Um, um, they don't have any idea what they are reading. Like, is it okay if they are just, you know, looking at the pictures and just making words up, for instance? Of course it's okay. Like, there is no right or wrong way to playing. There's no right or wrong way to reading. It's okay if they are, you know, looking at the at the books and just, you know, reading uh, missing words here and there. It's okay if they're not even following the words whatsoever or just recreating the story using their own words. It's more than fine. And it's actually not just more than fine. It's actually encouraged as well, right? And um, I will be talking about this so much more in um, the Authentic Learning um, e-course. But 
I want to let you guys know that there is like you not know, just doing life with your children there is so much value in it and so important as well and your children your older children will get so much out of it as well right so including them in in the part of the routines as well right so um another thing um I, um, this was um, something that I really really love doing my older kids is to create activities so um, like I said earlier right when your baby is napping right to spend some time playing um, with your with your older children whatever interest that they're currently in but another um, great idea and something that my um, my older kids really really enjoyed doing when my baby was napping is we would create some activities together for our younger sibling right so I remember doing um, sensory bottles together with my older children for instance right so we would um, I would I would you know take out a few buckets of you know um, just different sensory items like pom-poms you know like rice like um, chickpeas and beans and things like that and my older children will help me you know we have a plastic bottle and they'll help me to decide what things um, they wanted to add to um, this sensory bottle for their baby sister and so we would do this together as an activity and they loved it right and then so it's it's like so many um um, so much value in this activity because you know one your your children get to feel their older children get to feel like they're they um what what they're doing is of value they're helping to be um they're helping the family right they're they're doing something meaningful for the family and so it's a sensory activity it's great for them as well right and and after the activity is actually completed, right, after the sensory bottle is done, they actually are so interested to see their baby sister and their younger sibling enjoying the activity that they have created for her, right? So this was such a really popular activity that um, my older girls did for um, their youngest, right? So creating a sensory bottle and, and just different things like that. So another thing I did was, um, because with babies, obviously, they are just all about the sensory play, right? And so we would do things like... Um, drawing for instance like i would tell them how you know at the start babies eyesight um, are not as great as their eyesight you know and they can only see things that are bright and have good contrast so we would draw pictures like um bl with black crayon um, just black markers on white paper for that you know that that contrast kind of thing that you know you might see on um, instagram or pinterest where lots of people share for baby play activity ideas lots of black and white contrast images for instance but instead of getting you know books instead of getting getting um prints out you know contrast cards right store bought kind of thing so meaningful for your older children um to actually make pictures for their siblings to actually see as well so this was something that um again my older children did as well like they would draw pictures that are just those um contrast dark colors um like black and dark brown dark blue kind of thing and then we will stick it up on the wall next to um, the baby's change um, table. So they really get to see how they can actually play a role in caring for their sister. Basically, my goal is always to help them to grow their bond, to see how they can love on their younger, um, younger sibling and vice versa as well as um, the younger sibling go, grows older, right? And um, what else did I do? So I did sensory bottles uh, as activities uh, with my older children for the younger sibling, right? And then we, we drew pictures as well. And then we did, what else did we do? We did um, sen lots of different um, sensory materials um, on on. on on cards as well so like I would I would get um, a couple of um, sensory materials and then we will glue them onto um, uh, cardboard and then we will let um, let our our baby um, touch it um, when when she was doing tummy time so that was really fun and really exciting for my older kids as well to feel like they are just helping helping me as a mom and helping their um, their younger sibling to grow and learn as well. So um, I hope um, that was um, helpful. Like it was, it was um, yeah, such a such a great and precious time of bonding, right? So if anything else, right, just remember to really focus on the relationship, right? Not so much on the activities, but as much as possible, focus on the relationship between siblings and see how they can actually help their help you how they can actually help their siblings how they can actually show love and show concern for their for their um, younger sibling as well you know like sometimes what they can do depending on their age could be different like i said the older kids could be you know reading but if you have a toddler who can sing sing get your toddler to sing with your kids and and all those um finger rhymes and things like that you know we i cannot 
tell you how many times we sing um, row 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 your boat to my um my youngest when uh, she was born right because that was something that my my um, second born could do as a 16 month uh, sorry not 16 18 month old when her the youngest was born my second was only 18 month old right she couldn't read she couldn't do a lot of things but she could sing and so we would just sing all the time sing lots and lots of songs together and all those things are so valuable as well right you know so i'll, I'll as I mentioned, I will talk more about this in authentic learning, but you know, things like singing, um, finger rhymes and things like that, right? It has so much value in terms of language development, like later on down the road, right? You might think these are all, you know, not so important, just things, little things like this, but it's all the little things that actually become the big things, okay? All right, so I have answered uh, how to be intentional with older siblings when there's a newborn in the family. 